Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at water as a solvent, water as a transport medium, water as a reaction medium, and then we'll finish it with a summary. So water can act as what we call a solvent. So the liquid that makes up the cytoplasm of cells, and in different fluids of the body like blood and sap, is not just pure water on its own. It is actually called what we name as an aqueous solution. So aqueous is referring to the idea that it does contain water, but a solution refers to something else, and it means that there are other things in the water other than just water. So the cytoplasm is an aqueous solution. So forming an aqueous solution requires the dissolving of solutes into a solvent. So a solute dissolved into a solvent forms a solution. So the solvent in this case is the water, and the solutes are the things which dissolve into the water. And together, when you have water which has dissolved substances within it, you form an aqueous solution. Water is very good at being a solvent due to its chemical structure. It's a powerful solvent because it's a polar molecule, meaning that it has an uneven distribution of charge across the molecule's shape, which allows it to easily dissolve ionic or polar molecules. So remember, the structure of H2O is two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom, and because of the charges and the positions of electrons, the oxygen atom has a slightly negative charge, whilst the two hydrogen atoms have a slightly positive charge, denoted by delta positive or delta negative. And the reason that it can act as a solvent for ionic or polar substances is because ionic and polar substances have positive and negative parts to their structure. So the negative area of the water can attract anything positive, and the positive areas of the water can attract anything negative because remember that positives always attract negatives, and vice versa. So if you were to start with some ionic substances and you added them to a container or a particular area of water, the water molecules get attracted to those ions based on their charge, and that's for any ion that's in contact with the water. So let's illustrate that here. We have our water molecules, and we've dissolved an ionic particle, in this case just a very small one, into the water, or an ionic substance. Ionic substances are made up of ions, which are both positive and negative, and they're sort of held together in a kind of lattice. So the water molecules become attracted to those ions that are exposed to the water, and the water molecules then cluster around each of the ions individually, separating the ion from the other ions in the lattice. So they kind of one by one begin taking out these ions and surrounding each ion by water. So we've got a positive ion here, which was represented by the purple ion, and that will be surrounded by water. And then we've got negative ions represented in green, again, surrounded by water. And eventually all of these ions will be dissolved because they'll each be surrounded by water and the ionic lattice will no longer be an entity together. So the negative ions are attracted to the hydrogen because the slightly positive hydrogens in each water molecule are attracted to the negative ions charge. So remember opposites attract whereby positive is always attracted to negative. So what we have for each water molecule are the two H's and O's, and it's the hydrogen which always has the delta positive charge. The negatively charged ion is of the opposite charge to the hydrogen which is positively charged, so they attract. And the type of attraction that they have is from positive to negative, termed as an electrostatic attraction. So that's how the negative ions get dissolved, by the positive parts of the water molecule at the hydrogens. And you can see that all the positive hydrogens of each water molecule are surrounding the negative ion, and the negative parts, which are the oxygens, face away from this because they would repel it. So you can imagine this is sort of surrounding it as a sphere. This means that for the positive ions, the opposite happens. The slightly negative oxygen in each water molecule is attracted to the positive ions. So we have the water here again, and we have oxygen, this time facing the ions, and the oxygen has a delta negative area because it's negatively charged. This is the positively charged ion, for example, something like sodium or potassium. And the electrostatic attraction exists again between this negative area and a positive area. And it happens to all the water molecules surrounding the ion, again called electrostatic attraction. So eventually, all of the ions from the ionic lattice will be dissolved and each surrounded by water molecules. And at this point, when they're all in this state, the solute has been fully dissolved. So the solute was initially that ionic lattice, and now every single ion has been surrounded by water. So now we have a solution, where water is acting as the solvent. 
So because water can act as a solvent, it can also act as a medium to transport certain substances. So it can be used as a transport medium for solutes traveling in particular compartments. So in the blood, for example, in a blood vessel, we have a solution made of water and the water has dissolved particular solutes. Again, the water is clustered around the ion based on their charge. So these purple molecules are representing solutes. And this is how the solutes can be carried in the water through whichever fluid this is, blood or filtrate or whatever that happens to be. So we can see this in animals for specific substances where water in the blood carries a range of important solutes. For example, gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen. So carbon dioxide and oxygen can be surrounded by water as well and transported through the blood, where oxygen goes towards tissues needed for respiration and where CO2 is a side product from that respiration which needs to be taken away. The water can also transport and dissolve polar biological molecules like amino acids, glucose and nucleotides. So these molecules are polar enough that they can interact with the water's charges and be carried through the bloodstream and also inorganic ions as well, because they have a charge which can interact with the water molecules. So particularly important ions are sodium, chloride and potassium, which we get from our diet. So for example, for the chloride, which is negatively charged, we would have those positively charged hydrogens in the water attracting to it. For the sodium and potassium, which are positively charged, they would be facing the oxygens, which are negatively charged. But again, they can all be transported as the water flows. Plants also use water dissolving particular solutes in the phloem, and the phloem carries particular sugars and sap. So it carries important solutes like amino acids, sugars, and ions. So we can see the plant is made up of various vessels, and in this case we're referring to the phloem tissue, where particular solutes are dissolved in water as a sugary solution. Finally, water can act as a reaction medium as well. So the cytoplasm of the cell for any organism is always some sort of aqueous solution. So it's water which has dissolved lots of solutes. And this is where lots of our chemical reactions happen. Not all of our chemical reactions, but a great amount of them happen in the cytoplasm because it can dissolve certain substances. For example, when these solutes dissolve in that water, they are free to move around. This means they can interact. So here's the water as the solvent. And what we can have are dissolved enzymes or other types of molecules and they use the water as a kind of medium to interact with each other if they're carrying out a reaction. So this reactant can combine with another reactant far away to form products, and products can move through the water to get to wherever they're desired. So it acts as a kind of sea for all of the reactions to happen in. And specifically for enzymes, it allows them to collide and interact with the substrates so that they can catalyze important reactions. So here we have our enzyme dissolved in the solution and this would be the substrate for that enzyme. And being dissolved in water allows them to move freely, and eventually they will come together to form a reaction. If they were in some sort of solid or gas state, the particles wouldn't be free enough or close enough to interact together. So the ability of water to act as a solvent makes it a really good reaction medium for all cells found in all organisms. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.